In this project, we transcribe a YouTube video using Whisper from OpenAI and cache the transcript as a CSV file. We also save the entire transcription into Obsidian as a note with the original title of the video. Additionally, we store chunks of the transcription in a separate markdown table, where each row includes a link to the corresponding segment in the YouTube video. We do the same process for Excel with clickable links that redirect to specific video timestamps online. If you are interested in AI-related content, check out other videos on this channel. Consider subscribing and support the channel with likes and comments. For this tutorial, make sure FFmpeg is installed on your system. Otherwise, check the video Talk to Autogen Agents Using Whisper and Gradio, which guides you through the installation of FFmpeg on your Windows machine. To follow along with this tutorial, clone the repository from our GitHub page. The link is provided in the description. In your project folder, clone the repository and change to the directory. From inside the directory, launch Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, we first create a virtual environment and activate the virtual environment. Make sure the name of the virtual environment appears before the prompt. In the requirements.txt file, all of the packages needed for this project are listed. There are some additional packages that we will need for upcoming videos. So this project serves as a starting point. We use pip to install all of the packages and their dependencies. This takes some time. And when all of the packages are installed, the prompt comes back and we can clear the screen. We do not need any OpenAI API key for this project. In this tutorial, we use Whisper's base model. Depending on the language or background noise of your videos, you may choose a different model. The model card with more information can be found in Whisper's GitHub repository. Keep in mind, bigger models have better output quality, but take longer to transcribe. Now let's dive into the main part. Open the transcribe IPI NB Jupyter Notebook and choose a kernel to be able to run the cells. First, we import the packages. Then we define the Whisper model. Next, we provide a YouTube URL. For this example, we use a video about Jim Simons and the Medallion Fund from the Swedish Investor. You can use any other English language video you prefer. Next, we assign the URL to YouTube video URL and create an object of the YouTube class of PyTube and assign it to YouTube video. Using dir, you can see all of the properties and methods of the YouTube object. We are interested in watch URL, which we already had, and the unique video ID and the title of the YouTube video. If you want to store other information like the views and the length and the publish date and so forth, you can create a pandas data frame and store them in a SQLite database. Now we are looking for an audio stream. If you check the streams, we see we have a list of streams with different types and qualities. We are interested only in audio streams. So we filter the streams for audio and see that we now have only five streams. We choose the first one and download the audio MP4 stream at 48 kilobits per second to a file with video ID in the name inside the MP4 folder. Just as a reminder, make sure FFmpeg is installed on your system and in the system path. For the installation, check the video Talk to Autogen Agents using Whisper and Gradio with the provided link. As you can see in the link at the end, T equals 173. And if we click on the link, we go directly to the part which explains the installation of FFmpeg. That is exactly what we will do in this tutorial. So watch till end to see how we create these links for Obsidian and Excel. 
Now comes the cell with the main process, as we use the OpenAI Whisper base model to transcribe the audio. It takes some time to transcribe the video. When the execution of the cell is done, we can check the output dictionary. In text, the whole transcription is stored. In segments, a list of transcription segments, and in language, the language of the text. First, we store the text part in output text. We save output text as a note in Obsidian and use the original YouTube video title for the file name. When we check the note in Obsidian, we see the note with the title. Next, we get the segments. The segments are stored as a list. We create a pandas data frame from the list of segments and check the first five rows with head five. The first thing we do is to save the segments as a CSV file to disk as cache and backup. When we check the CSV folder, we see the file. You can install the recommended Rainbow CSV plugin for VS Code to see the columns of the CSV file in different colors. Next, we read the CSV file again and check the first rows using head. From this point, if we change our code or have any problems, we can read the CSV file again and do not have to transcribe the video. We only need the ID and start and text for this tutorial. So we create a df underscore export data frame with only these columns. We can optionally add the video ID as a column. Later, if you want to store the segments in a database, the video ID and the ID together can act as a primary key. The next step is to add the watch URL as a column. If we check the data frame, we see the column is added and all rows have the same link. So we have to add the starting point of each piece to the link. We create a lambda function to add the starting second of the text part to the watch URL. We first convert the start to an int and then convert it to string and add it to the watch URL. Then we apply it to all of the rows of the data frame. Now we have the watch URL and the starting point of each chunk of the transcription. For example, we have the second 16 or later in the video second 1337 and so forth. Next, we store the data frame in Obsidian as a table. When we open Obsidian, we can reorder the columns and maybe delete a column to make more space. We can search for a word like return, and if we click on the link, we jump directly to the point where this chunk is about. It has averaged a 62.9% return per year before fees, and 37.2% net of fees, versus 11% for the S&P 500. That is the most impressive investment record I've ever heard about. It's even better than Warren Buffett's. Now that we created the chunks with jump links in Markdown in Obsidian, it's time to prepare it for Excel Lovers 2. Back to Visual Studio Code, we define a function to create hyperlinks from the URLs to be used in Excel cells. It takes the value and creates a hyperlink understandable for Excel. We apply it again to all of the rows and see the watch URL can now be put into an Excel cell and turn it into a link. So we create an Excel file based on the data frame using two Excel. When we open the Excel file, we can format it and adjust the column length by selecting all of the cells and double clicking on one of the right or left borders of a column. Then we select a cell inside the data and by command A, select all of the related cells for the table. With command T, we create a table from the selection and now we can filter the text column. For example, if we filter based on the exact word quants, we see that we have two occurrences for quants in our transcription. 
We mark it and click on the watch URL. What do you think of quants? Jim Simon's medallion fund has done 39% net of fees for three decades, which proves that it works. But they were very, very smart. Yes, they got very rich. Very, they? very smart. And very smart and very rich. Yeah. And, 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 and very high grade, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Jim yeah. Simon's. Uh, we're not we're not trying to make money trading stocks. I mean, no. <laughs> the answer, we don't think we know how to do it. I mean, it doesn't. Charles Darwin used to say that any time he found evidence that contradicted when we come back to our Excel and clear the filter, we see the part. In the coming videos, we will use advanced retrieval augmented generation or rack techniques to identify related chunks. There is another way to improve the search. If you now look for yearly return, you cannot find anything. You have to search for return per year to be able to find the piece of text. We will solve this problem with embedding and semantic search in upcoming videos. With semantic search, you can easily look for related text even if misspelled or not in the right order and link to the right position in the video. Good luck transcribing your favorite videos and jump directly to the interesting part.